the shell 2017 so let's talk about this thing right now so in case you haven't actually heard or you've been living in a shell yourself you know this movie's been getting a lot of flack right some people are saying this shit's got more white out than fucking staples some people are saying what in the high and tie is scarlett johansson doing in this movie uh but nonetheless obviously we're not going to talk about this type of subject matter the whitewashing and erasure stuff or whatever it may be because there's really no point and honestly i really could care less because the movie's coming out so it is what it is you either to deal with it or you don't see it or whatever it may be but it's you know it's on you uh, so let's talk about the film. Now, people talk about the 1995 film as a masterpiece. It is a groundbreaking film, not only in anime, but just cinema just to begin with. Taking inspiration from Blade Runner and also inspiring movies like The Matrix. It is not only just a great sci-fi, you know, cyberpunk movie. It's actually just a fantastic, interesting, thought-provoking, philosophical movie. Some people say it's actually kind of complete bullshit. Gets a little bit pretentious. Uh, a little bit too preachy, you know, looking at both sides of the argument. But nonetheless, this movie has a lot of critical praise. So when you have a remake coming out, it makes you wonder what the fuck is they going to really do well enough to the point where they actually kind of do something different compared to the original film, which was groundbreaking and innovative, regardless of its uh, regardless of its uh, inspirations, regardless, right? So let's talk about this thing. Overall, does uh, Ghost in the Shell 2017 do that? The answer is not really no, uh, just to begin with. I think overall, Ghost in the Shell is uh, 2017. It's pretty much kind of like that hot chick from across the room that you look at, you'd be like, hey, she might be kind of interesting. She's kind of, you know, she's actually pretty hot. I'm going to go over there and, at, you know, talk to her. She put the most hard. Then you talk to her, you realize, okay, she's got a little bit of interesting background going for her. Then she starts talking about more things and you realize that this bitch is kind of dull. This bitch is actually not as interesting as her tits and her face kind of make her out to be. And there's nothing more interesting to her than just kind of her body and just overhaul her conceitedness of her looks. That's basically it. And that's kind of Ghost in the Shell 2017. There are some interesting background stuff that they try to throw out there. But at the same time, this movie is more um, serviceable on its looks rather than anything else just to begin with. Now, if you're expecting a thought-provoking film you may get some of that but at the same time it's very much dumbed down to appeal to the Hollywood masses because I feel like this movie wants to ob uh, you know obey the source material and then it also wants to be a groundbreaking or not groundbreaking but a entertaining Hollywood blockbuster and sometimes it fails on both fronts and therefore it's left in the middle therefore being a very okay type of film uh, at least in my perspective just to begin with now overall I would say that this movie does have some good questions as I said that makes you want to think about certain things, but it doesn't really have a good enough script to really dive deep into them. So therefore you just kind of left wondering, does this movie think I'm stupid or does this movie think they're a lot smarter than they are? Because the questions that they're asking is not necessarily well-deserved and movie that really isn't that deep, uh, just to begin with. Now, overall, this movie succeeds. It gets its win or its W, so to speak, from his uh, production value and just overall the cinematography and just the look of the film and just overall world building. I think that's actually the biggest uh, compliment that you could kind of pay for this uh, film just to begin with. And that's pretty much what Rupert Sanders did for you know Snow White and the Huntsman. Uh, the movie was kind of dull for the most part, but it had a little bit of an interesting visual take to it um, uh, and a little bit of a world building. So I think he's well at doing that. Unfortunately, he doesn't really adopt most of the stuff, as I said, from the original source material. He does, but he doesn't do it in a very interesting enough way to the point where he kind of sacrifices stuff and therefore, you know, it's kind of left, you know, just there. Uh, just to begin with. Now, you talk about the cast, talk about the whitewashing. Now we're back to this shit, right? So Scarlett Johansson is pretty much major. Yes, a major kind of like disappointment in some areas. Uh, that's what I would pretty much call it. Overall, the thing about Scarlett Johansson in this movie is just that I feel like she's not the same in every movie, but I feel like she's the same in every action film. I can't put my finger on it or describe it, but Scarlett Johansson sometimes feels like she does the same thing in her action films. Sometimes like very stoic, sometimes very robotic, and it is what it is. But you know, overall, she's a very serviceable uh, actress into this role. She's not fantastic. She's not going to blow you away. But the only thing that's going to be blown away is probably the man's pants when she starts to unrobe herself. That's pretty much about it. Um, but that's basically what I like to see just to begin with. I think the biggest problem also with this movie is just that it tries to dive deep in some emotional stuff, but unfortunately, there's really no character to root for emotionally. The movie doesn't really have anything going for it because the characters are very, very blank and just a, a clean slate. There's really nothing there. Scarlett Johansson is there and she's doing a good enough job, but at the same time, I feel like the material is either let her hang down or she's not bringing her A-game just to begin with. There's no really interesting characters. The Japanese cast is good. I thought he was actually pretty solid. The, the guy that plays the Japanese guy, I forgot his name. But he was actually pretty good. Um, the, the unfortunate thing is just that, like I said, this movie wants to be deep, 
but at the same time, it wants to be a Hollywood, you know, blockbuster. And sometimes it fails on both fronts. Overall, uh, from a production standpoint and a visual standpoint, just to begin, begin with, it works. But when it comes to some of the emotional stuff and the character stuff, Ghost in the Shell just isn't overall that thought-provoking at all. It doesn't question yourself, or at least not in a very interesting and meaningful way. It just, you know, has some interesting questions that you think about and then you kind of forget because it's just kind of there. The movie does kind of feel like it has some bad pacing every now and then. Um, and the action scenes are actually pretty spectacularly fun. You know, they're not great, but they're pretty spectacularly fun. Overall, this movie was never going to be uh, a great masterpiece like some people say the original is. Mainly because the original had the visualness at the time. It had, you know, the thought provoking stuff, whatever it may be. This movie, at the same time, it couldn't really do that because if it would have done that, it would have just seemed like it was just rehashing the original. And it pretty much does on some fronts some nice shots from the original, but that's about it. It doesn't ha capture the tone or, well, not the tone, but it doesn't capture what um, the deeper stuff of Ghost in the Shell. It captures the visual stuff, you know, the conceited stuff. Um, that's pretty much about it. But if you want my money's worth, I'd say you can wait to a matinee. But I'd say this is actually a movie that is visually stunning that you should see it, um, you know, on the big screen. There's some things that also don't make that much sense. And I do feel like the story just kind of feel like it, it, it flatlines a little bit. Um, but there's no emotional weight to pull for here. There's no real character to root for. And therefore, you just kind of left watching a, a, a chick, you know, in a skin tight, you know, shell. Just kind of doing her thing, and that's kind of fun to see, but at the same time, it's not overall interesting enough to really grab your intrigue. Uh, like I said, visually fun, visually fun, but that's basically the biggest win that this movie kind of gets. Other than that, I don't think it touches upon the original, but then again, would you really think it would have? That's just my thought. Comment, subscribe, and like. I'm Chris Smith, and I'm signing out.